What's up everyone, Anwar thinks back once again and tonight I've got a comedy gig. I'm going to beat the frog in Manchester at the famed Frog and Bucket Comedy Club. Hey yo Anwar, what's the Frog and Bucket? For those of you who aren't in the know, the Frog and Bucket is one of two full-time comedy clubs in Manchester. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, I get it, I'm with it. But what's Beat the Frog? And Beat the Frog is their weekly competition where 10 to 12 hopefuls turn up every week in the hope of lasting five minutes. But it's not as simple as that because there's three card holders in the audience. And if all three cards go up, that's it. Your time's over, get off the stage. But if you last the five minutes, you make it through to the clap off at the end, which is basically an audio vote where the audience decides who's gonna be the winner on the night. Now, of course, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, so we can't operate as usual. So the Frog and Bucket, what they're doing is, they're bringing contestants to the venue, the audience are gonna be watching live via stream, and it's all gonna work that way. Now, I've not done one of these Zoom gigs before, so I'm a bit anxious and I'm a bit excited to kind of figure out how it's gonna work. Will we be able to hear the audience? Will we be able to see them putting the cards up? Because that is one of the big things when you're there and someone puts the card up in front of you. It's then basically saying, listen, mate, I don't like you. I want to get rid of you. Now, I've got a mixed history with doing Beat the Frog. I've been voted off before the five minutes. I've lasted the five minutes and not won the clap off. I've lasted the five minutes and won the clap off. It's really a mixed bag. You never really know what you're going to get. And there's a lot of variables like what kind of audience is there watching, what are they into, do they like the kind of material that you've got, and at the same time, what's the competition like? Because if you're on with a lot of other comedians who are getting great reactions, then it's tough competition. Right, that's enough of me talking. I best go and get to the venue, but I'm going to take you, yes, you with me via the medium of this camera. So hopefully we get some good footage. I can show you what the Frog and Bucket's like on a regular day and also see how it's kind of operating in the current circumstances. Right, so I just got back from the Frog and Bucket and I know, I know I said that I was going to get as much footage as possible but when I was there, everyone was busy setting up and I didn't really want to be wandering around disturbing people with my camera, shooting all over the place so I got little bits of what I could get but I got a little bit more coming up. When I got there, I noticed that Danny McLaughlin was the MC which straight away starts things off on a positive note because he's just so fast the way that he links things together. I think it really draws the audience in into enjoying the show. All the staff were very welcoming, very friendly, and they made sure stuff was COVID compliant, but not in that school teacher or Tesco kind of don't walk the wrong way down the aisle stuff, but more like you've got your own places to sit, you're all two metres apart, we can get you snacks, we can get you drinks, all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of a very comfortable vibe. But the big question that everyone wants to know, and they, they always ask me as soon as I finish with Beat the Frog is, how did you get on? So first things first, I lasted the five minutes. Now I didn't expect to going into it because the medium's different performing to people via an online stream. I've never done that before, so I was a little bit wary. I was a bit unsure if you'd be able to hear them, but all credit where it's due, Frog and Bucket, they sorted out earphones. And I don't know why I'm pointing to my ear as if you don't know where earphones go, but they went right in there. Right, so now the earpiece tutorial's out of the way, how did the rest of the show go? There was a little bit of a delay on hearing the audience back, you know, when you're doing your joke and you're waiting for the laughter. So what I decided to do was kind of steamroll through and not wait for the laughter. That probably wasn't the best idea because you're stepping all over your laughter, but because it was that kind of pressure situation where the cards could go up at any time, I was a bit wary of leaving too much silent time and then maybe no laughter coming and maybe I need to get over that and then be able to deliver better. 
so I don't want to waste your time watching my set, but here it is in Fast Forward. Right, stop. It's at this point that I had an utter brain fire and I completely forgot where I was in my set. Luckily, I thought we were around the five minute mark, so as I was starting to waste a bit of time going into a bit of a dad joke that I didn't really want to tell on stage, we heard the glorious music. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, I'm all for a bit of honesty, so this is how I clumsily dealt with it. I've got like the worst joke of all time, but I don't think it's the right place to say it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to do that, aren't I? So when I was a kid, my parents, they sent me to... Right, so now that's my set out of the way, what about everyone else? I actually went on second. So how it works was there was five acts in the venue and then I think seven live via the stream. Now as an act, it was a little bit confusing at times because we couldn't hear what was going on over the streams unless it was just before our set because then we had the earpiece in and we could hear what was going on. But what I do know is altogether seven people got through. Three of us in the venue and then four people over Zoom and then we all went through to the final clap off. As a man, oh, went through to go to the stage. <laughs> and now for the big announcement. Did I win? No, no I didn't win. Luckily, all the years of playing hockey, especially the year at Bolton where we got relegated and got battered every week, has got me used to being a good loser. But that being said, I don't like to make a habit of it and I go into everything trying to win it at least. But hey, what can you do if someone else has put a better show on than you? Someone else has put a better show on than you. It's good to see people that I've performed with before, like Adam Elmy and Tegan Marlow were both in the venue. And then there was Josh who kicked off the show via Zoom as well, who I managed to listen to via headpiece because it was just before my set. And that's a part of the joy of it, is that you're going on this journey with other people and seeing their progression as well. Like for those people who've been watching this channel since the wrestling days, you know I'm a big fan of indie wrestling and one of the big things about indie wrestling is you can go to these small shows and see these future superstars. Superstars? Superstars who will eventually make it to a top level. I'm going to keep that flub in. Editing Adam, keep that flub in. So for those of you who haven't been to open mic comedy nights before, it's worth checking them out because you will be entertained. There's a caveat though, not everyone will entertain you, but there will be people there who are funny, who will entertain you, so it's very much worth checking out. And for those of you who haven't checked out Beat the Frog before or haven't checked out The Frog and Book It, you can go over to their Facebook page, just type in Frog and Book It, and you can find out how to buy tickets to Beat the Frog, which will be every Monday from now on. And also they've got pro shows where they've got professional comedians on every Saturday. The one good thing though about performing at the Frog and Bucket with no audience compared to having an audience is usually I come back after performing in front of hundreds of people and there's just adrenaline just flowing through my veins and I can't sleep. But tonight I'm calm, I'm relaxed and I'm hopefully about to have a great sleep. So let's end it off there. Drop me your comments down below, let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed it and ding the notification bell, that way you can follow this journey with me. I'll do more comedy videos when things open up again if people enjoy it. Obviously wrestling's my bread and butter. I've been doing Pokemon recently. Do a bit of football, a bit of UFC, but that's enough of my face. Let's get it over with. I'll see you soon with more videos. Can I have 12 bottles of bleach, please?